using your steel shears. This is the final piece that will be used to keep the magnets in place when the rotor speeds up. Here you can see the screws that I use to secure the magnet. I used self-drilling screws, but I've made pilot holes in the rotor to tighten the screws easily. Let's start the assembly now. Carefully insert the rotor into the stator. Be careful with your fingers because it does have a little bit of impact when you put the rotor in. When you disassemble the motor, keep in mind to mark the lids front and back because it might not fit when you try to put everything back together if they're not aligned properly. Now, try to put the screws on. If it's not working, try to close the lids more with the stator using the hammer. Don't beat it too hard, as the lids can crack. Now, try to put the screws in again. If you can put the washer and the nuts on, you can tighten them to compress the lids. Try to tighten them one by one at the same time to make sure the lids are closing up straight on the rotor. Use two wrenches to tighten the bolts. I will use my multimeter to test the electric generator that we've created. Put the black lid into the COM port and the red lid into the V port that comes from voltage. The motor will have three phases. All three will produce energy while the generator is spinning. You can combine two of them to measure the volts that are produced. This generator will be an AC source of electricity, like what comes from your sockets, so dial the multimeter to volts AC.
As you can see, we got 9 to 12 volts when I'm spinning using my hand. Now I will mount the pulley that will help me to mount the windmill blades to spin the generator. As you can see, it's a hard piece of steel. I weld four steel profiles where the aluminum profile will fit and will be kept in place with screws. Tighten the screw that will keep the pulley in place. I'm going to use car reparation putty or Bondo and hardener to fill the holes from the screws to improve the aerodynamics of our blades. Rope, some self-drilling screws to attach the blades with the aluminum profile. Here we have a set of putty knives. If you don't have that, don't worry. You can use a piece of steel to mix the putty and spread it on top of the holes. Here I have sandpaper to smooth the putty after it's dried. Now I will measure the PVC pipe and mark the length of my blades. In my case, it's 50 inches. Make four or five marks around the pipe at the same length and join them using your marker. After you've finished the mark, use two pieces of profile to keep the pipe from rolling on your table. Use the angle grinder to cut the pipe. Now, get the rope to measure the exterior diameter of your pipe. Mark the spot where the rope comes together with the other end. Use a cutting tool to easily cut that and measure its length. After you measure that, mark four equal segments on the rope in order to divide the pipe in four equal sections. Mark the pipe on one end. I'm going to use a chalk string to keep the line straight. Put some chalk inside. Spread the rope from one end where you made the marks to the other end and try to keep the string straight. Pull the rope tight and make the mark. I'll use a piece of profile and my marker to permanently draw the line. Now do the same thing with the rest of the marks to divide the pipe into four parts.
After you've done that, we can proceed to cut the pipe in half first. Now we can cut the blades and go to the next step. On one end, make a mark in the middle of the blade. On the other end, mark 75% from the blade width. Where we have left 25% of the pipe width, make two marks of 8 inches each. Now join the marks with a line to give shape to our windmill blade. I've made the same marks on the other blades, so now we can begin cutting. Secure the blade in the vise and, using the angle grinder, start cutting the excess to obtain the shape we want. Do the same thing on the other end, and we can see that it's starting to take shape. 